When I was younger, I, I, I wanted to be an actress, but I, it just wasn't something that was going to be feasible. You grew up not very far from here. You grew up in Queens. That's right, yeah. How did you take that path from Queens to Hollywood to becoming an actress? Um, it was a long journey. I mean, it started off with public school and um, roaming around the alleyways and hanging out. That's how we played, you know. Um, and then sort of not really having an idea of what I wanted to do until I really went to college. Um, I mean, when I was younger, I, I, I wanted to be an actress, but I, it just wasn't something that was going to be feasible. It's so far out there. How does one even achieve that? Yeah, and my parents didn't understand that. I never even mentioned it to them. I didn't even bring it up until I actually started pursuing it because it would just be this, you know, this kind of blob that they couldn't really connect to. You know, you have to give them something tangible, like, I, I have a stethoscope on. I am going to be <laughs> a, you know, doctor or I'm going to be a lawyer. But I think um, the arts is not something that they really understood or focused on. I read your mom was a biochemist right, and your yeah. dad a civil engineer. Mm -hmm. So you ended up going first to NYU and then to the University of Michigan. Yes, I went to NYU first and then I transferred to University of Michigan and that's where I graduated. And you started to fall in love with acting and actually get to perform while you were in college. Well, yeah, well, I was there. I just did some, you know, you know, Jesus Christ Superstar, <laughs> <laughs> hair, you know, stuff in the Who background. Who were you in that? I was probably one of the, I was one of the tribe members, you know what I mean? I just ran around the background with long hair and sang and, you know, had a really good time. It was sort of a break from, from the classes that I took, um, but I loved it and I was always in rehearsals and not until really towards the end did I realize that this is something I could really do. And that was sort of at the, my senior year when I did a play called Alice in Wonderland and I was cast as Alice. And before that I had never seen myself as somebody who could be the lead, you know, because on television and film there was never anyone that uh, represented what I thought I could be. You know, so I just thought I'll just, you know, always be in the background. And that's the first time I thought, wow, I can do something and I can change, you know, how I, I perceive myself in the world. It was about your perception of yourself. Yeah, because I'd never, I always thought of myself as somebody that was going to be kind of a part of something behind the scenes, but not in the forefront. And that's how we kind of grew up, you know. Um, also, my parents were from China, so there was a language barrier and, you know, we never were sort of outspoken in that way. So it really changed the dynamic of how I saw the whole world. How did you manage to break through? It had to be so tough for you to put your hand up and really push to be number one, be heard. I think it was just about this passion that I had for the arts. I really knew that this is what I wanted to do and I was going to have to pursue it with everything that I had. And I also wanted to show my parents and prove to them that I could do something. I was going to do something. I mean, I had no evidence. <laughs> I had no <laughs> proof of it. But you believed but in yourself. I did. And I really had to just, it was just about, you know, getting down there and, and putting myself out there. It was about grit. True grit. True grit. <laughs> How did you make that jump from the theater to the screen? I think it was just an auditioning process. And in fact, when I um, ended up doing Ally McBeal, um, I had booked a, uh, a show that was in Northern California. And I was like, of course I'm going to do the play. <laughs> and my, my manager was like, you know, I think you should really reconsider and think about doing it was just a guest spot and I like being heel. She's like, it's incredibly popular. It's a great show. It's really funny. We didn't get to elementary yet, but that's where I want to go next. How do you get into the character of Watson? The writing really sort of helps encapsulate that character and we have such a great staff of people. And Rob Doherty, who is the executive producer, does an amazing job of really connecting the dots for me. And he had said very early on that this character is going to develop very slowly because she, she goes from a sober companion to becoming his partner and his roommate and so we didn't want to just jump, you know, from one thing to another. So I think she discovers um, her talents and also, you know, I think what's 
the core of the show is their friendship. This is the first time that Dr. Watson has been played by a female. I think that's right. I, although I, I think someone had sent something like oh, early okay. on saying maybe <laughs> there's another Dr. Watson actually that was a female. I, I don't know. This Thank you, Internet. <laughs> <laughs> You're so useful when you come back with that kind of information. Well, I think it's cool. I, I love your character. And one of the characters from your past that I absolutely fell in love with, I'm a big Kill Bill fan. Oh, thanks. And Oren <laughs> is, to me, one of the coolest characters you've ever played. <laughs> what was it like doing that? It was pretty incredible. I mean, there was a, a lot of training involved with that, and it wasn't just the the sword work um, with the katana. It was really also learning the language um, and learning the dialogue and understanding the the costume. We, you know, Quentin had flown this wonderful woman in from Japan who only did um, the kimono, and that's all she did. And she only worked on my kimono. It was very ceremonial. There was a specific way to do it. Um, the belt, everything had to be, you know, there was a certain amount of space between your neck and the collar. It was pretty fantastic. It's an art. Everything about your performance there was so attentive to detail. I think there was a really um, specific stillness that Oren had, and um, I wanted to bring that quality to her in all of her movements, because there, when she does do something, uh, when she does something that's very fast, like, you know, jumping on at a conference table and cutting someone's <laughs> head off, it has to be very precise and unexpected. I at least wanted to incorporate that so that you didn't really see, um, you couldn't predict what she was going to do next. Are there any roles you haven't played yet that you would just kill to play? I mean, there's so many people that I would like to work with and so many things that I'd like to do. I'd like to do a movie in French or, mm. you know, some another you language. You speak French? No, I mean, I speak <laughs> a little bit of French, but I mean, so I would you like to- you want to learn French would, and then yeah, do a movie in French. Yeah, I would like French. to be challenged in that way mm -hmm. where you are put in a place where, you, because you, you know, will understand something innately, emotionally, um, and to be able to um, express that in a different language and still have the same, you know, emotions connecting to characters. So be, because basically what it is, is you're, you're communicating with other people. It's about your relationships. And I think that would be a wonderful challenge and, um, and important, you know. You've had such an incredible year between elementary, your new son, congratulations. Thank you, that's really exciting. How has motherhood changed you? It has really sort of delineated my days, um, the way that I allocate my time, um, and the people that I surround myself with. What's the biggest misconception you think you had about motherhood? How frazzled it can be. It is, it is a lot of juggling. I mean, I sometimes wish I had octopus arms, you know? <laughs> so you can do so many different things at once, but it's manageable. Um, you just have to sort of laugh a lot and just see how ridiculous the situation is. <laughs> Throw your hands up. I can't do everything. I can't be everything. Yeah, and just see how, like, you know, within a matter of 10 seconds, the, you know, the whole area is like a disaster. It's an explosion <laughs> of things, you know? Toys, bottles, you know, the whole nine yards. And now you're partnering with Tylenol. They have this wonderful campaign about how we family. I'm a mother. I have two children. I'm a single mom. I have a a great family made up of two moms. I did it through a surrogate. There's so many different ways that people parent and people have children and have families and I, I really think that it's important to support and advocate and embrace all kinds of families because it's not about anything but how you love your child and how you love your family. And you know when I first came out and sort of um, you know sent in social media I decided to send out how and you know I suddenly had a baby, you know, and had a family, I know that it was surprising to a lot of people. And, you know, everyone has their different opinions about how things happen. What do you think of all the bad advice that you've <laughs> received, especially about motherhood and especially about pursuing a career? And in your own right, since Rockwell, y you have done incredible things in your career. You haven't, at least on the surface, you haven't <laughs> slowed down. I know, if anything, it feels like they, they added more gas to the tank. Um, <laughs> I love people's advice. I always think it's very funny because every, it just shows how much experience somebody has um, and what their experience is. And to me, I don't, 
you're, you can take it or leave it. You know, people are always going to tell you what they think and how their parenting experience was or their history was with their child. Especially and in New York City. Especially <laughs> in New York City when you're walking down the street and you're carrying your baby. I think that you can't really be too sensitive to it mm -hmm. because it's just people want to share their stories, you know. I was scared to sort of pull the trigger, you know, and I think that seeing other um, people in the world do it in a different way kind of encouraged me to say, you know what, I think I can do this as well. What made you fearful? Um, doing it on my own, you know. Um, uh, also, just having, you know, the idea of like, w how do I go about telling people or how do I go about not telling people, you know? And I decided I'm just not going to tell anyone at all and then I'll just blast it out um, all at once, once it's done. Because there's so much trepidation about is everything going to be okay? Is it going to work out? you know, and when do you do it, and who do you tell, and if you tell this person, is this person going to be insulted, and it's just, you know, I decided to just make it an incredibly private and uh, intimate experience, and I think it really worked out well, and I was really lucky in that sense. The but it's also just inspired from how other people also did it, you know? The picture that you sent out of you and Rockwell as a newborn was so touching. It was the moment, like, seconds after he was born. So it was a really, you know, I'll never forget that. It, it really, you know, the miracle of birth and just life in general to me is, was sort of captured in that moment of, of when he came out. <laughs> you seem to be a relatively private person. Yeah. <laughs> and yet, because of the fact that you are a public persona, because you're an actress, because nowadays everybody is sharing everything on social media, there is that tension where you probably feel on some level like you have to share certain things that maybe 10 years ago you might not have had to share. I, I think there's a, a way to use social media um, and your your privacy in a way that you can sort of control that at least. I think that it's important so that people can feel like they're a part of your lives um, and that you're not excluding them. But at the same time, I don't know that I would be the type of person to share absolutely everything about myself. I do think it's important to show a part of yourself, especially if you're in the public eye, because I think there's a difference between um, being a celebrity now and somebody who is an actual um, an artist or an actress. Famous and for being famous. Famous for being famous. And I don't necessarily think that's something that I want. I want to actually work for you know, what I do and how I do it. I you don't enjoy the craft. I don't want to be handed something because I'm, you know, I don't know, in the public eye for no reason. I think I, think I have to have a reason for, for living. <laughs> I want to do something and I want to make something of myself and of my life and have a career. I want, that's my legacy, ultimately.